Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number eight. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter seven, start or the finished file, click on the link below the video. Hey, the first six videos in chapter seven were about model building. But in this video on the sheet, calculate revenue, we want to talk about a number of functions. V lookup, the straight lookup function, sum product, and count ifs. Here's our goal. A company that sells rolls of fences needs to calculate total revenue from a list of customer transactions and a pricing table. Now, this data set with number of rolls of fences sold for each transaction provides the number, but we're going to have to use the pricing table. And notice, pricing is done like this. From 0 to 143 is 98 bucks for a roll. From 144 to 298 is 187, et cetera. So there's different pricing categories. Now, if we read the rest of this, given the transactional data table, boom, 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 with the number of rolls of fences sold for each transaction and the pricing table right here, calculate the total revenue and count the number of transactions that fell into each pricing category. All right, we're going to see how to do this two ways. One way is to add an extra column to get the price from the table over into our data set and then calculate total revenue. So it would be called two helper columns. Then it's easy. We just use the sum function to add. We're going to do that. Then we're going to see how to do the same exact calculation without any helper columns. All right, so the first one is straightforward. Let's go ahead and I'm going to select that field name and point to the fill handle and click and drag. I'm immediately going to point to the smart tag and say fill formatting only. Now I'm going to type price tab and revenue enter. I'm going to have a formula here, so I'm going to do what I've been doing all along. I'm going to add some a border and some green. Now, how do we do this? Well, guess what? If we were doing this by hand, we'd look up the 540, find the category, we'd see that it's between 288 and 577, and then we'd bring this 168 back to the cell, right? 168. We'd have to then do that for each one of these. Now, we're going to use the VLOOKUP function, which all of you know how to do from prerequisites. But I, I will remind you here, that 540 is not going to look through both columns. The fact that we have a from units and to units is only for our convenience looking at it. Because the way VLOOKUP works is it only is going to look something up in the first column of our sorted table, 0, 144, 288, 578. And here's how it works. VLOOKUP will say, hey, VLOOKUP, look at that 540. And VLOOKUP will race down until it bumps into the first value bigger than it, 540. Are you bigger than this? Yes. Bigger than this? Yes. Bigger than this? Yes. Bigger than that? No. So it knows to stop in the row before. Then, because we have three columns in our table, we'll have to tell VLOOKUP to get the price from the third column, and then VLOOKUP will bring it back. All right, so you ready? Equals VL tab, and our lookup value, that's what we have to look up, and that's a relative cell reference, comma. We have to tell VLOOKUP where the table is, highlight the first column and all the way to the third column. And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that, so it remains locked on that table all the way down. Comma, column index number. That's us telling VLOOKUP which column, the first one, the second one, or the third one, has the thing you want to go and get and bring back to the cell. So I'm typing a 3, comma. Now here we have a choice. Approximate match, that's when we're doing commissions or pricing or taxes. And let me move this out of the way. We have a first column where we can't possibly do an exact match. We want to do the match where we take it and bump into the first bigger one and jump back. Now, actually, technically, that's not how internally VLOOKUP does it. 
it does it a much faster way, but that's the conceptual way to understand how it works. And we are going to tell it approximate match so it does that. Later in this class, we'll have exact match when we're like looking up text or something, people's names or email addresses. Now here's the thing. That screen tip shows range lookup argument with square brackets. Anytime you see square brackets, it means if you know the default, you can leave that argument out. And guess what? We know the default. Approximate match is always the default for VLOOKUP. So we do not even have to put this argument in. Anytime we're doing approximate match, we are going to backspace. We're not even going to get to that. We're going to leave it out. That's the formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Control 1, and here's our format cells. I'm going to say currency, two decimals is fine. Click OK. Now, while this column is already there, I'm going to right click it and go to the mini toolbar and get my format painter. Because guess what? I don't want to reformat it over here. Boop, it instantly gets it right. Now, the revenue formula is easy. Click on the top cell, equals the price times the actual number of units. And we are never going to have a rounding problem here because we, we have dollar amounts or even if we had pennies. We don't have any fractions of, of pennies or tax rates, so we don't have to use round. Just two relative cell references, Control Enter, double click with my angry rabbit and send it down. I could go down a few cells or go down to the last one, control down arrow, and I'm going to hit the F2 key to check. Sure enough, that's right. While I'm down here, I'm going to check this one, F2, and it looks like it got the right cell references. Escape, control, up arrow. Now we simply come over here, and I'm going to highlight these two cells, right click, Format Painter, click right there, right click, Format Painter, and click right there. Now I want total revenue, but I want to actually force the wrap on this. Notice over here, it looks like we have the, the built-in wrap text, but I don't want it to have any text here. I want it to always drop down after total revenue, and the keyboard is Alt-Enter. That's a forced text wrap in a cell. And I'm going to type helper column enter, because we have two extra helper columns price, then total revenue. Now we simply click in the cell. Alt equals is the keyboard for auto sum. Click in the top cell. Control Shift down arrow. And I'm going to use Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell. And Control Enter. That is our total. Now I want to teach you uh, two new functions. And we've seen both of these in our prerequisite class. Now just to pull a parallel for VLOOKUP. I want to expand this column. I'll, I'll, I'll change the size back later. And I want to look at a different function called LOOKUP. Not V for vertical, not H for horizontal, the LOOKUP. Now here's the amazing history of this function. This is one of the original functions all the way back to VisiCalc. When Bricklin and Frankston invented VisiCalc, they wanted a function to look up tax rates and things like that so they could do their taxes. But there are some important facts about this function. Now, the amazing thing is it will do, and notice there's two screen tips. They both have lookup values, and lookup only does approximate match. So if you have an exact match situation, if you're using lookup, you have to sort the first column. But we have a lookup value, but we have two options. You can have a lookup vector where it will find a match, and then a completely separate result vector to look something up and retrieve it. The one we're going to use here is the array. And the amazing thing about lookup value and array is that array will do horizontal or vertical lookup. Now, actually, if you go to the website and download the files, the PowerPoints have complete notes on all of the functions we're using. Now, how does it determine whether it's doing VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP? If your table is taller than it is wide, or exactly the same number of rows as it is wide, number of columns, then it does vertical lookup. If the number of columns is bigger than the number of rows, then it does HLOOKUP. The final point about lookup is lookup 
like the sum product function is one of those few magic functions in Excel that can handle array operations without any special keystroke. All right, so we're going to do this. I'm going to say, hey, look up this, comma. And I'm going to highlight the table, just like we did in VLOOKUP and hit F4. But wait a second, array? I don't see a column number. Here's another cool thing about lookup. It always gets the value from the last column. So actually, if you are doing VLOOKUP for an approximate lookup, that's a much shorter formula to enter. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. It gives me the exact same values. Now actually, I'm going to move this off to the side. Watch this. I'm going to use my Move cursor right there. Click. And I'm dragging it or moving it. And I'm going to leave this as a trail in this finished uh, workbook. So this would be look up to get price. And I'll leave that over there. Move this back. Now we want to see the real reason we are learning how to use lookup. Control C, Control V. And this is not going to be helper column. This is going to be single cell formula. Now what we would like to do is if there was a way just from this column to look up every single one of these and retrieve from our lookup table an array of prices, we could simply multiply that array of prices times the number of rows. And as an array formula, an array calculation, we could calculate in a single cell our total revenue. Now, we, we might think we could do VLOOKUP. And for the lookup value, just highlight all of the items we want to look up. But that argument cannot handle an array operation. So no problem. We switch over to the original lookup function, lookup. And there it is. This lookup value, I can highlight this entire column, Control Shift Down Arrow, Control Backspace, because I'm not going to copy it, comma. And then the array, I'm simply going to highlight this table. And close parentheses. But let's go back and think about this. That lookup value right there, it's expecting a single value, like over here, where it gave us a result, a single value. But because we gave it a whole column, and I don't know how many there are there, let's just say there's 10,000 there. Because we gave it 10,000 values, lookup will deliver 10,000 values to the cell. Now, if I hit Enter, it only returns the first one because a cell cannot display more than one value. But in edit mode, I can highlight this and hit the F9 key to evaluate. And you've got to be kidding me. Look at that, 168, 168, 198, 168, exactly like we got over here. So Control Z, using what's called a function argument array operation, meaning we gave it lots of values, so the function's going to spit out an array of answers. And our array, also knowing that this function automatically does approximate match and retrieves a value from the last column, we have done our job. We looked up every single price. Now what do we do? Well, I need to multiply this resultant array times the entire column. So what function is perfect for multiplying and then adding? Sum product. Now sum product has array, array. I'm simply going to leave that there. That first array, remember if I F9, it's just all the prices right from this column. Control Z, come to the end comma to get to the second array. And now I simply highlight the number of rows. Control Shift Down Arrow, Control Backspace to move back to the active cell. Internally, some product will take all of the number of rows and the prices, multiply each one of them, and then add them. So when I hit Enter, it's going to give me the total. Now one other thing about this F2, and click inside here, that array 1, that's an array operation. If we had put this inside of the sum function and used the multiplying operator, we would have had to use a special keystroke because sum function doesn't understand array operations. But the sum product has no problem with this. So Control Enter. And the beauty of this, of course, is Control Shift Down Arrow, Alt EAA to remove everything. This is never going to get it, right? But that doesn't need those helper columns. 
there's some situations where you're building models where you just don't want your all the space to be used in your model. So having an alternative to create a single cell formula is awesome. Now I'm going to control Z because of course I'm going to leave that there. Now there's one last task. We want to count for each one of these pricing categories how many transactions we had. Now I'm going to use this extra price column here and use a simple count ifs. I'm going to come over here, right click, Format Painter, click. And then here I'm going to type count transactions in each price category and control enter. Maybe I'm going to change the width of the column, double click, equals count ifs. The criteria range, control shift down arrow F4, because I am going to copy this and I need it locked. And there I have it. Simply the criteria is that particular price, close parentheses, count ifs used to count the items from this column over here with a single condition or criteria. Control enter, control shift tilde or grave accent to apply the general formatting, and then click and drag down. Now, if we didn't have these columns here, it's not too much more difficult. And I can see I put this in the wrong column, so I'm going to highlight the whole column. Click with my move cursor and drag over a few. Highlight this, Control C, Control V, and point to the smart tag and say, keep source column widths. So now I'm going to delete these formulas. Now, if we didn't have this price column, is it possible for us Given that we have from units to units and price, is it possible to build a formula to count? Sure it is, because we have our units here, right? We simply can use count ifs with two conditions or criteria. Equals count ifs. And the criteria range, I'm going to have to repeat it twice. I click on the top cell, Control Shift down arrow F4, because I need it locked, comma. And now I'm going to scroll over here to concentrate on this formula. The criteria, well, the first condition is it has to be greater than or equal to the lower. So in double quotes, we put our comparative operator. Double quotes, greater than or equal to. Always have to use two characters when you have an equal sign. There's no single character for greater than or equal to. And double quotes, and we have to join it using ampersand to our lower. Comma, and I don't want to go over there and highlight again. So watch this. I'm going to click on my screen tip to select everything in the criteria range 1, Control C. Then I click on criteria range 2, Control V, comma, to get to my second condition. And we have to do double quote. And this is less than or equal to. Notice this is set up with a 43 and a 44. Sometimes if the upper and lower of the next class are the same, then you have to build your criteria differently. But we have two equal signs. Both the upper and lower are included for counting for each category, end double quote, join symbol, I get the upper, close parentheses, control enter. Now we're going to have a problem here. When I drag this down, the last cell, F2, oh, it's looking at text. We didn't have a number here. Now actually, if we wanted that text there, and that's pretty good, because it tells us exactly what's going on. We could build a crazy formula, but I'm not going to do that. Two ways we could do this. We could just put some huge number here, which I don't like. And then, of course, it works, Control Z. Or I can just come here, and guess what? I'm just going to get rid of the last condition. So now we have count ifs only in the last cell, only saying are you greater than or equal to that number. So close parentheses, Control Enter, that will work. Wow, so in this video we saw two different count ifs, one not based on the helper column, just the number of rows, one based on the helper column. And then we saw over here, an amazing array formula with some product and lookup that calculated the total revenue just with quantity column and lookup table. And then, of course, in many situations, you just want to add some helper columns, V lookup, calculate revenue, and sum. All right, so in this video, we saw some important functions, V lookup, sum, 
look up function, sum product, and count ifs. Now in our last video, we're going to have a problem where we have to use the amazing lookup functions index and match. All right, we'll see you next video.